Aloha. Good morning, good afternoon, or good evening. You can go to live in France, but you cannot become a Frenchman. You can go to live in Germany or Turkey or Japan, but you cannot become a German or Turk or Japanese. But anyone from any corner of the earth can come to live in America and become an American. Welcome back to A Nation of Immigrants, a bi-weekly talk show program featuring the lives of immigrants, knowledge, diversity, and inclusion, created by Think Tank Hawaii and the Kingsfield Law Office. We invite renowned immigrants to discuss their life stories, immigration adventures, and their contributions to cultural diversity. Today's guest is Ms. Chang Chen, also known as Dr. Chiu Chang, Chinese-American attorney and legal historian. Dr. Chang, Doc, or Dr. Chiu, thank you so much to be our guest. You're welcome. I have been uh, reading your books and uh, uh, you know, pay attention to your exhibitions and are quite impressed by your accomplishment. And uh, if you allow me, I'm going to share with our audience a short bio of you. And so the audience will know your many achievements. You grew up in Taiwan and immigrated to the United States 50 years ago and pursued your graduate studies after obtaining your PhD in biochemistry from Rutgers University and the Jewish doctor from Columbia Law School. You launched a very impressive legal career spanning 20, 35 years. Not only not one to just practice law, but you was elected as a senator in Taiwan and hosted four television shows. During the 1990s, your most popular program, Chiu Zhang Talking Law, I believe the Chiu Zhang Tan Fa on Star TV in Hong Kong, propelled you into the limelight. You swiftly became a celebrity female attorney and personality. Still, in today, it's a real feat in Taiwan. You have authored 83 books on topics ranging from law to marriage, and mo your most recent exhibition and a catalog, Her Story, The Legal History of Chinese American Woman, was your first book in English and the first exhibition you created. And we are so honored to have you on the show, Dr. Chiu. Oh, thank you. Thank you, Chang. So you are in uh, San Francisco right now? Yes, I am. And that is your permanent residence. And is that, have you lived anywhere else in the United States? Um, yeah, I live in L.A. Mm -hmm. I live in Brooklyn, Manhattan, and uh, Bronx. I live everywhere. Okay, but mostly <laughs> the, the uh, East Coast and uh, California. And yes. obviously the California's weather is probably a little bit similar to what you have in Taiwan. And when, uh, could you tell us a little bit about your childhood? How did you grow up in Taiwan and your education in Taiwan? Um, uh, I was born to a, um, a, a, my parents, my father uh, was 18 years older than my mom. So basically, um, my mom is also a child, okay? So we're always competing for my father's finances because he was a law-abiding uh, government uh, officials. So uh, we don't have, we didn't have much money. So whenever... Uh, my dad bring home his salary. My mom would use it all on her uh, to buy beautiful dresses and all that because she was a child, okay? So um, from the very day one, I compete with my mom for my dad's attention and for his salary. <laughs> so <laughs> the only way to win uh, was for me to have good grades. So um, uh, so my dad said, if you have good grades, I'll, I'll give you some money. I'll buy you clothes and all that. So I tried very hard to be a good student. And also when I was in school, if I have good grades, I can have two X every day after mm -hmm. school. We got two X if you have good grades. So that's how come I study so hard. And then it become a habit. So I have to study, study, study. And 
our value system was the after elementary school, you have to take a matriculation test to get into the best middle school. And then you take another matriculation test to get into the best high school. And then you take another matriculation test to get into the best university, which is National Taiwan University. So I did all that. So if I don't take exam, I will feel what's wrong? You know, how come I'm not studying? And that habit carried me all the way. So, you know, I got a PhD, I got a JD, you know, I am master in taking all kinds of exams. Just give me an exam and I'll take it. Oh, <laughs> so well you guys well say, <laughs> uh, people think, oh, that's very sad, but it happened, just happened. So I got all, all those, okay? And then I didn't plan my career because I have no idea how to plan it because all I know is just taking exam until they told me it's time for you to get married. And then I say, oh, what do I do? And so there were a lot of men pursuing me. And my mom told me, find the richest. OK, whoever is the richest, you marry him. So I say, who? And my mom said, usually doctors. So my ex-husband is a doctor. <laughs> so I really am not very smart. OK, I follow the rules um, until and then three years into our marriage, my husband said, it's time that we have kids. Okay, then we have two kids, okay? And then my husband said, it's time you give up your legal career, come home and raise the kids. That's when I say no, okay? We find someone who can take care of our household because I want to have a career. And then one thing leads to another. I happen to be in a time where all the law firm I serve, like O'Melvin and Myers, Winthrop Simpson, are top firm. And they say, hey, we have an assignment for you. We want to put up a China office, and we think you are the person to do it. Hmm. So on one hand, I have a husband and two kids. On the other hand, China, which is a mis mysterious place, right? I only heard it. I saw it in the book. And they want to send me to China. Not just that, there were 14 law firms from England, from France, from everywhere, from Holland, from Australia. They all put together a joint venture. It's called Interjura. And they want a chief China representative. And I have to compete with two men and I got the job. So what do I do? I was barely 30 years old. So I say, this is more fun than staying home and take care of the kids. So my husband told me, if you leave the house, we're divorced. It didn't take me long to say, okay, we're divorced. <laughs> I'm sorry, am I setting a bad example? So I went to China. I started this office. Immediately, I was involved with communist China and all kinds of um, harsh, harsh reality sets in because communist China is totally different than the U.S. There, you cannot express yourself freely, okay? You have to um, do what they say. And I represent the Australian, yeah. I represent the German, and China. Yeah, we, we, Dr. Chiu, sorry to interrupt. And okay. which year you started your law office in China? Which year? Uh, 1986. 86. Actually, that was a relatively good year in mainland China. Yeah. Do yes, it think? is. That's why yeah. I'm still alive. <laughs> and, and, and you, uh, when you left Beijing, uh, Beijing. Yeah, which uh, then which year you left? Uh, oh, China? 1989, Tiananmen. Oh, after Tiananmen, Tiananmen. You left. Yeah. And then you returned to Taiwan, or you came? I returned to Taiwan because um, uh, Taiwan there was nobody okay who understand mm -hmm. China, and I happened to live there for three years. And I went to Taiwan you, yeah. and boom, huh? Did you uh, did you return your legal career in Taiwan, or you started another career like a Taiwan television celebrity in Taiwan? Which you uh, no, started your no, your I, 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 okay. Um, uh, when I was in China, I was few Americans there, and after I left, Deng Xiaoping, Chairman Deng Xiaoping, uh, summoned me to see him. And then he said, um, I want to give you a privilege. So for a year, 
you can register all the Taiwanese business trademark in China, and you'll be the exclusive agent. I was so happy. So uh, my uh, law office was doing very, very well. In, in Taiwan, in Taiwan. Yeah, in Taiwan. And then and, after and, that, mm -hmm. huh? Yes, go, go ahead, go ahead. Okay, so after that, um, uh, people invite me on TV talking about, um, you know, all kinds of things. They want to know what happened in China. They want to, what, what is it? And all that. So um, Star TV uh, asked me, do you want to host a TV show? And of course I want to. Uh, so then my TV show is called Chou Zhang Suo Fa, was very yeah. successful. Um, we have all kinds of advertisement and it started for two years. And then until, until, um, <laughs> I don't know whether to say it or not, until they try to um, sexually harass me and I say no. And that's when it started, stopped. Oh, sorry to hear that. And <laughs> when did you decide to come to the United States, which will be our main story about your come to oh. the United States, uh, you come oh. to the United States as an immigrant? No, when because you... I, no, no, no. In 1979, I have my U.S. citizenship. Okay. Oh, so even though had... I... Wow. Huh? Okay. Huh? That's early. Yeah, okay. yeah. Okay. Right. So even though I have been in China, in Taiwan, I always come back to the U.S. It's home. I have two kids. Mm. I have a husband who become now my ex-husband. Okay. So I have everything going in the U.S. still. A long I career. See. So you as husband actually practiced medicine in the United States, not in yeah, China. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yes. All right. Then we, we we feel like we are time traveling here. I thought that you have a, a little bit different uh, immigration uh, adventure than other immigrant guests. So you had your U.S. citizenship well before you have a full-fledged career in law yes. artists and uh, uh, television shows. Yes. So, and uh, so you, so let, let's go back to uh, the very beginning. So how did you came to the United States? How did you come to the United States in the first place? So oh, by study or by marriage? You just, uh, for, what was the first visa? You, um, you um, to the United I think States. it's a student visa because I applied mm -hmm. for Columbia University and they gave me a visa to study for master. Mm -hmm. And I come with my husband who also applied for Uni Columbia University who also got a visa. And then after we come here, um, he applied for green card because he is a, a preferred, uh, you know, Prefer the visa. He has green card right away, and mm -hmm. I, being his wife, I got green card. Okay, pretty cool. So uh, it, it appears you were on a student visa, uh, but your ex-husband qualified for a green card. Probably, uh, as a doctor, that would be an alien with extraordinary ability, or outstanding researcher. Something like that, immigration uh, category one. So it got a green card. So you you're pretty lucky, I would say, Doctor Chiu. You're, <laughs> you're the chosen ones. You're pretty lucky, and you didn't wait like most Chinese and Indians wait like decades for the green card. You got the green card, then you got your seat. So when you become a U.S. citizen, when you were naturalized a U.S. citizen. Were you, yeah, still, we were you still in school? Were you still in law school or graduate school? Yeah, 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 yeah. I got it in 1979. I become a citizen. Mm -hmm. uh, I studied law school in 1981 at Columbia, oh. and I graduated in 1984. Wow. So when you went to law school, you were already a U.S. citizen, and you right, were right. And right, that was, was never a problem. Um, yeah. And the, the I assume English was never a problem for you. You you had a full English proficiency in graduate school and law school. Mm -mm. No, um, I had a problem uh, with my PhD studies. Mm -hmm. um, I uh, it doesn't you know because I study biochemistry, it doesn't take too much English speaking. Okay, because just mm -hmm. do experiment and writing all kinds of formula. 
uh, the reason is I am more curious than other people. So uh, I work as a research assistant at Roche Molecular mm -hmm. Biology Institute, and it's time for advancement. My boss promoted another worker in my office, and uh, I asked my boss, why didn't you promote me? I worked hard. And he said, oh, because he has a family to take care of. He has three kids. And you have a rich husband. Go eat him. <laughs> you know, go. So he promoted the poor guy. So I say, that's not how we get promoted. You're wrong. Mm -hmm. So um, then Roche, then I talked to his boss, his boss, his boss. I say, I, I was mistreated. And so they almost fired me. Uh, but the union member was nice enough to tell me, hey, you don't know a thing. Go find yourself a civil rights lawyer to help you. So I went to Newark and find a civil rights lawyer. And I say, I am not being treated fairly. So he said, OK, let me write your boss a letter. So I say, who are you going to write? I said, my boss and my boss is possible. He said, no, no, no. I write to the president of Hoffman La Roche. OK, this happened in 1970, uh, no, 1979. Right. Mm -hmm. And so in a week, the boss, big boss of Roche in Switzerland reply and say, OK, we'll promote you. OK. And mm -hmm. I was so happy. I drove back to that, that lawyer. In Newark, I say, you are my hero. Tell me how can I become you? He said, for that, you have to study law. That's how I become a lawyer. <laughs> wow. That, that's a fascinating story. And uh, everybody uh, go to law school for various reasons. And yes. uh, I think you'll have the the, the personal you know, story to share and how yeah. you study law school. That, that's very impressive. And so yeah. is that... It, was that story, your personal experience, also one of the reasons why you began to write books about the Chinese American women's legal history in the United States and and created her story and her story too, those two uh, exhibitions on Chinese American women's legal struggle in the United States. Was that one of the reasons behind your exhibition and all and books? Um no, it's not. Um no, because I, I never had such a great ambition to save mankind. Okay. I never wanted to. <laughs> but um um I wrote a book for my friend who said uh he's struggling because he doesn't have any clients. And I say, oh, don't worry, I'll, I'll, I'll write an article for you, and it will appear on World Journal on Sindao News, okay? And once I promote it, you, you'll get clients. So it's all out of the good heart of mine. Mm -hmm. But then after I wrote the article, he wasn't impressed. My friend wasn't impressed. I said, why didn't you, did you get more clients and all that? That was when I found out. His family was one of the richest family in San Francisco, and I tried to save him. So, but I couldn't stop at that point because I was so so touched by all the immigration story. You know, all the immigrants, how they suffer, how they fight. So I keep on doing research and I keep on writing. So after I accumulated about a hundred cases, I published it as a book in Taiwan, and the uh, National History Museum director call me and say, hey, I got an idea for you. The story was nice, but he liked particularly the woman's story. So he said, why don't you curate an exhibition in the National History Museum about Chinese American women? So I never curated anything before, and I love all challenges. So I took on the challenge, and our exhibition was a smashing success. Wow. Yeah. What wonderful. Thank you so much for sharing. And uh, uh, how many years you have been working on this project? First oh, 10, more person. than 10 years. 10 more years. than 10 years already. Yes. Oh. And, and uh, um, mm -hmm. uh, it's worse, OK? Before, uh, I do one story. It's like 1979. And the next story will be 1985 and then 2000. But now, it's every day Chinese American women are being abused, are being discriminated. Every day. I never see it like so bad 
Okay. Um, yeah, sorry to hear that, but uh, I commend your wonderful achievement in <laughs> created, uh, created these two important uh, shows, and they are making impact. And what, but my question to you is, Dr. Chu, are there any specific policy or legal changes that you hope will come about as a result of your advocacy? Yes. What exactly I, you want to change? Okay. Give us examples. To put Chinese American history in elementary books of the America. Right now, my grandson, who is in elementary school, he school spent three months out of a year study black history. Okay. Mm -hmm. But a, without Chinese American building the railroad, American would never have the economic success it enjoyed today. And where were they? They were even their picture were even deleted in that last, you know, when two uh, uh, railroad joined each other, there was a huge celebration and picture, and they deleted all the Chinese workers. So I hope during my lifetime, I can see Chinese American history written in the elementary store school books. Uh, there are three states that already has this. One is New Jersey, one is New Hampshire, and Unfortunately, California is not yet one. Hmm. I think that in Minnesota, and there's also uh, efforts to put at least Asian American history in the elementary school books. Great. This, is, this is absolutely wonderful, Dr. Chu. Yes. And we have Native Americans, Native Americans history have been long ignored. African American history have been long ignored and uh, 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 misrepresented, and I believe that the self-awareness and uh, uh, more and more educated uh, Asian American and be aware of that our history has been long ignored and misrepresented. And this is a wonderful idea. I really appreciate that, and I hope that it can be achieved. We have like five uh, uh, six minutes left, but uh, I do have a few questions I do want to get to you, Dr. Chiu. The first okay. one is from our uh, think tank Hawaii CEO, Dr. J. Fidel, and he did uh, want uh, me to ask you this question. And what does your experience with the U.S. immigration law, and which you didn't have uh, too much difficulty in obtaining your green card and uh, citizenship, but you do work a lot with a lot of immigrants, I believe. And what you, what's your basically, what's your reflection on the United States as a nation of immigrants? Oh, it's wonderful. I mean, no other country, you know, immigrant wouldn't survive in China or Taiwan. There'll be so many discrimination. They just can't enter. So America taking in so many immigrants, although we have so much troubles, okay? But I think it's a great country. And um, um, what can I say? One thing I, I am curious, okay? I'm helping a lot of people getting their visa, their green card. One thing I'm so curious is 90% of the person who are going to be, ex, you know, like what, extradited out of this country got married. Oh. <laughs> 90%. <laughs> <laughs> when they find spouse, okay? <laughs> That's a mystery. That's a mystery. So um, as long as you have a will, there's a way, okay? So I wish everybody who wants to get, um, be able to stay in this great country, you know, will have a chance. But my mystery, I know you know the answer because you you smile. <laughs> 90%, okay? 90%. There was one story in Craigslist, okay, Craigslist, you know Craigslist, no. where people find jobs. And there was a woman, a white woman, who said, I'm 19 years old, and I have $2,000. I want to pay anybody who can marry me and give me a green card. Of course, he was the first person who answered her ad is the immigration officer. Officer, obviously. obviously. Yeah, and yeah. she was going to be out. She got married. Yeah. Hey, she got married. <laughs> Immigration fraud is a felony under the U.S. law. And I strongly discourage anybody <laughs> yeah. 
Yeah. Even you have a legal, if you have difficulty with our immigration system, consult with a competent attorney and yes. make sure you follow the law and don't put yes. something on Craigslist and solve your problem. <laughs> that doesn't work, right? That, that's a, that's a, it's a very funny story, Dr. Chiu. Yes. My next question to you is, you have you have a very long career in legal, in uh, television, and uh, now you are well settled, have a comfortable life in California. What advice would you give your give to yourself if you could go back in time to your early twenties? Say, like you can go back time in nineteen seventies, and you meet a younger Chiu Zhang. And what advice you could give to yourself? Um, I benefit so much from my ex-husband, okay, from my marriage. But if I can go back, I'll say, find a job that you can be become independent. You don't have to get married. You don't have to have kids. If you have kids, you don't have to have boys, okay? You don't have to change your last name. And just find a path of your own so you'll be happy. You don't have to eat leftovers, okay? Clean up your kitchen, okay? And you don't have to make sure your kids become doctor, lawyers, and find your own path. So when you are at your last minute, you look back and say, I had a good life. Mm. Wow, thank you. Last question. And I know you are a very highly productive author. You're right a lot of books, 83 of them, and you write a lot of articles, you publish them, but uh, is there any particular book you enjoy in reading recently or a particular movie you're watching recently you would like to share with our audience, you would like to recommend to our audience? Okay, recently I, I, I have to recommend myself, okay, my oral mm -hmm. history of Li An's wife, you know, Li An, the, the oh, Oscar yeah. winning Li An, yeah, his yeah, wife. Yeah, yeah. Somehow, uh, I tricked him into letting me write her story, okay? She she said, no, 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 but she already told me the whole thing. Um, I like that book mm. because she can tell. If you read her book, if you decide whether, if you're a woman, you decide whether you should get married or not, that book will help you to wow. decide. No, I think no. <laughs> well, the book, uh, the book was published in Taiwan already, I believe. No, 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 in no. Amazon.com. Oh, Amazon, okay. Is it in yeah. English language or in Chinese language? In Chinese language. In Chinese language. Right. Okay, I will check out it's called. What's the Chinese title? Uh, okay. The Chinese title is Li An Beihou the Da Nu Ren, the Superwoman ah. Behind An Li. Wow. You know, An Li, I, uh, An Li went to University of Illinois at Urban yes. Champaign. That's the school I went to. I went to oh, okay. school in Champaign, Urbana. So my okay. graduate advisor always mentioned An Li. An Li, An Li uh, you know, studied uh, art at UIUC with my advisor's wife. So it's wow. uh, I, I very much, and An Li's story was fascinating because he was a house husband for 80 years, perhaps. And, uh, six uh, years six without years. making any income. Yeah. And 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 uh, and the wife was the main source of income for the family. I very much look forward to reading that book. That's that's fascinating. And uh, you did you did a great job, Doctor Chiu. Well, we yeah. are just uh, running out of time. What a wonderful you know, those what a wonderful stories you share with us. I really appreciate your time. And uh, I again, I congratulate to you for the wonderful exhibitions you created, and the the impressive, uh, monumental scholarship you gathered, and and also the strong advocacy you have been engaging in on behalf of Chinese American women and Asian American women in the United States. Thank you so much, Doctor Chiu. Thank you for your time. And thank you so much for everything you have done for Chinese Americans. Thank you for your platform. Thank you. That's an effort. Thank you. Thank you. Aloha. See you next time. Thank you so much for watching Think Tech Hawaii. If you like what we do, 
please like us and click the subscribe button on YouTube and the follow button on Vimeo. You can also follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and LinkedIn, and donate to us at thinktechhawaii.com. Mahalo.